everyone's currently quite rightly freaking out about heat pumps and RCDs, but there's another danger lurking in the wings relating to RCDs and it could cause massive problems if you get it wrong. We're answering the question, what's the difference between passive and active RCDs. We normally talk about passive and active devices in connection with RCD socket outlets, like these ones from the Axiom range by CED Electrical Group. The first challenge to get over in answering this question is that these RCDs go by many different names. So, an RCD socket may not say active or passive on the device or the packaging. It may say something like latching or non-latching instead, or even manual or automatic reset. These all relate to the same thing and can be a little confusing to start with, but actually within this proliferation of names, we find clues as to the difference between them. Ultimately, it all boils down to how they behave in the event of a power cut. Let's demonstrate using this rig that I've created here. I've got an RCD socket outlet here that's labeled up on the packaging as an auto reset device, and also that it's latching. This type of device is therefore passive. Now, next to it, we've got a normal socket outlet, and we're going to plug into this normal socket one of these RCD adapters. Again, both of these are from the Axiom range by CED. The RCD socket adapter is manual reset and non-latching. That makes it an active device. Now, it's worth noting it's not the fact that one is a built-in device and one is a plug-in device that makes them active or passive. You can get similar devices in both formats. So, what is the difference? Well, let's plug in these testers from socket and C. I'm going to use the SOK32 in the RCD socket outlet and the SOK36 in the RCD adapter from CED Electrical. And you can see that the lights come on as you'd expect. It also confirms I've wired the sockets up with the right polarity. Now, let's simulate a power cut by removing the power supply to the sockets. You can see we've lost power and the socket testers are off. If we restore the power, look at what happens. The latching or auto reset or passive device comes back on and power to the socket tester is restored. If however we look at the other device, the one that's non-latching or manual reset or active, we can see that that one hasn't reset and restored power internally. So to answer the question, a passive device won't need resetting after a power cut and will restore power to whatever's connected to it. An active device will disconnect the connection to the outgoing side of itself and won't make that connection again once the power is reset unless someone actually presses the button. So the next question is, why do the two different types exist? Just before we answer that question, let's head off a misconception that could arise with this auto versus manual resetting business. We've seen the difference in operation when the power is removed from the upstream part of the circuit, but will it behave the same way when a fault occurs downstream from the RCD protection? Well, again, let's investigate practically. Let's test the RCD on the latching or auto reset or passive device by pressing the test button on the socket and C SOK36 tester. This simulates an earth fault and the device trips. But what happens when we remove the fault? Well, it's actually already gone because I'm not pressing the button anymore, but let's unplug the SOK36 tester just to be sure and plug in the SOK32 instead. You can see that the socket tester isn't back on. So the auto reset device hasn't auto reset in this case. That's because the device is only auto reset after the power feeding them has failed, not after a fault downstream has been removed. And you can clearly see the very obvious safety reasons behind that. Now, having cleared that up, let's get back to figuring out why we have two different types of RCD in the first place. The main factor in choosing which type you install is down to how you want the loads that are connected to them to behave following a power cut. Let's illustrate. The very first one of these plug-in RCD adapters I ever remember seeing was in my granddad's kitchen and he used it to plug the lawnmower in. Now imagine if there was a power cut and my gramps, being the practically minded make do and mend legend that he was, would have had the mower upside down trying to figure out why the blades had stopped spinning. Now the power comes back on and all of a sudden it's not just the lawn that's being mown. So the point is clear, there are certain loads like power tools that you don't want bursting back into life when power is restored as it could present serious danger to someone. So active devices would be used in environments like workshops and similar. However, there are certain loads that you want to get back up and running just as soon as you possibly can, even if there's no one around to use them. In fact, especially if there's no one around to use them. The classic example is a fridge or a freezer. If there's a temporary power cut, everything in them is going to start coming up to ambient temperature. If it's in a commercial or industrial kitchen that's closed, say, over a weekend, and the power goes out for five minutes on the Friday night, then come Monday morning, the chicken's going to be running around the kitchen. 
Or, to give an example where we want to keep animals alive, maybe an aquarium that's relying on pumps and heaters to keep fish swimming and healthy. If the power goes down, you want these to come back on as soon as power is restored without human intervention. So a passive device would be the best choice in both of these locations. And both of these locations are good examples of places where you might use individual RCD socket outlets rather than protecting the entire circuit with an RCBO. That way, a fault on a piece of connected equipment would only disconnect the socket outlet it was connected to, not the entire circuit. A similar example would be the checkouts at a supermarket. You wouldn't want multiple tills going down because of a fault on one, and there's no requirement to have the circuits supplying them RCD protected if they're wired in armoured conduit or some other non-buried steel method. So there we go. That's the difference between passive and active RCDs, why we have them and where we might use them. For more information on CED products, check out this video right here or via the link in the description. And all that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.